Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and in this video I'll show you how to run Roll20 commands directly from handouts. You'll be able to do things like make die rolls, send chat messages, and run macros. And the great thing about this is, you can do this with any type of account, there's no API required to do this. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So when you're prepping an adventure, probably the first thing you do, if you're like me, and I know I am, is I read through the entire adventure handout, and I look for things like traps that the players are going to encounter, the monsters that they'll fight, of course, but then things like clues they may find, or environmental hazards they may encounter. And I think about things that I'm going to need to maybe make macros for, and have those ready for the game, and then when game time comes, I need to remember to make particular die rolls or copy and paste text that the players have found from the handout into the chat window. But the thing is, you can actually send those chat commands and die rolls and macros right from the handout itself. And while this is a small thing, it really does help your game run much more smoothly. So let's start out with setting up a die roll. So I'm looking at the Keep of the Zombie Goblins. This is a module that's available in the marketplace from DM Dave. It's a fun little module. You should check it out. But basically, one of the things that's in here is the keep that the goblins are in is very old and unsafe. And as you can see here, there's a 10% chance that a ceiling will collapse dealing 3d10 bludgeoning damage to creatures in the area. So instead of rolling a d100, I want to just have a link in here that I can click to automatically roll that dice for me. So for that, we're going to say edit, and then we're going to find the spot in the handout that we want to go down to. So right here, unsafe stonework. And 10% chance, so I'm just going to click in here, and I'm going to click on this link button. And in the text to display, I'm going to say roll percentile dice. And then in the to what URL field, I'm going to put in a back tick, which is the character to the left of the number one on a US keyboard. And then I'm just going to put in my roll. And since I want this roll to be hidden from my players, I'm going to say GM roll and then 1D100. Insert link. Save the changes, and there we go. Now, if we click Roll Percentile Dice, there's my GM roll, 1D100, 92, and so that didn't cause the collapse. I can do the same thing for the damage dice. We can just say Edit again, and again, we'll scroll down to that spot, and this time around, I'm just going to put in another link. We'll say Roll Damage. And in the URL, again, it'll be the back tick. And then we'll do an inline roll here. We'll say 3d10 bludgeoning. Insert link. Save the changes. And there we go. We get that nice inline roll, 3d10. So now let's see how to do text. If we scroll down here, you'll see that the players will find this note in the pocket of a dead body that's in the keep, and we want to show this to the players. Now, I could just copy and paste this, but I'd rather just be able to click a link and have it automatically go there, just because every now and then you fat finger, control C, control V, whatever, and it's not clean. So what we're going to do is say edit, and again, we'll scroll down to where that is in our text, and basically what I'm going to do here is just copy this line right here, and I'll say text to display, send note to chat. The URL, again, will be back tick. I'm going to paste in the text, but I'm going to go back to the very beginning here. I'm just going to press the home key. And after the back tick, I'm going to type in slash D-E-S-C for description. And then we'll insert the link, save the changes. And we'll scroll down here, and here's our send note to chat. And see the DESC gives it this nice formatting here where it kind of wraps it in the, the blue and centers the text. Now the great thing about this is you can run macros this way as well. So you'll notice that in the keep itself there's yellow mold. And I looked at this and I'm like, you know, this is something that really warrants a macro. So I came in here and I created the yellow mold macro right here. 
and I can just you know run that. You can see here this is the output of it, and that's great. I don't want to have to click on the collections tab and go down there though. And also, I try not to clutter up the bottom of my bar here if I can help it. I mean, I could put it on the bar if I wanted to, but I'm trying to keep this as clean of an interface as I can. So that being the case, what I can do is, again, edit the text, scroll down till the yellow mold here, and we're just going to insert another link. And, and again, the text will be yellow mold, and it'll be a back tick. And to run the macro, what we're going to do is put in a hash symbol, and then the name of the macro, so yellow mold. And we'll insert that, save it, and there we are. So when we get to this point in the dungeon, we can give the description to the player, see what they're doing, and then we can just click on that link right there to automatically pop the macro into the chat. No need to click on the collections tab or come down here to a button and clutter up the UI or anything like that. Now, while this trick itself does not require the API, if you do have access to the API, you can run API commands via this method as well. So, for example, let's say that when the party gets to the kitchen here, they're going to encounter some goblins. I want to start up some fight music. So what I'm going to do is just come in here. I'm going to say create a link. I'm going to say text to display start fight music. And then in the URL field, I, I'm going to paste in a roll 20 AM command. So again, it'll be the back tick and then the roll 20 AM command audio play. Don't display a menu. And the playlist I want to run is called Goblin Combat. So I'll insert that, save changes. And now I'll click on start fight music. And there you go. Goblins are fighting. Now, one last thing to mention about this trick is you need to have your handout as a child window of the main Roll20 window. It, you can't pop the handout out into its own window, otherwise these commands won't work. So you'll see if, if I do that, so here it is, it's in its own window now. If I scroll down and I try to run, say, the, the damage dice, I'm getting an error message saying that the page isn't found. So you do need to keep your handout windows as children of the main Roll20 window. So there you go. That's how you can run commands straight from handouts. It's a quick little tip, but really, it will save your life on those nights when you just can't type to save your life. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.